Good evening and welcome to the January 10th meeting of the Beaver Creek Parks, Recreation and Culture Board. Uh, hereby call this meeting to order and uh, we will begin tonight with our roll call. Mr. Corbett. I am here. Mrs. Fulcher. Here. Mrs. Heaton. Here. Mrs. Bidigari. Here. Mrs. Meyer. Here. Thank you. Uh, next, we move on to the approval of the agenda you have before you agenda for tonight's meeting. And once you've looked at that, I will accept a motion to approve. Motion to approve the agenda. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 And thank you. And then also you have in front of you a copy of the minutes that Jackie put together from our December 13th meeting. And again, if you see no changes, um, I will either accept some changes or a motion to approve the minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? I'll second it. I'll, I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Great. Motion both pass. Which moves us on to the staff report. Superintendent Farrell. Thank you, Chairperson Corbett. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, this month, what I'd like to talk about is cost recovery. Um, going back through my notes, like the last time we kind of discussed that with Park Board was 2021 when we first started the process. So I wanted to kind of update you on, we did put together a whole cost recovery plan, um, give you a little bit of background and then where we ended up. So, so our cost recovery plan, it's a guide to help staff develop policies and procedures associated with cost recovery and pricing. Um, again, back in the summer of 2021, uh, as a staff, we kind of met in different staff meetings, uh, recreation staff and then senior center um, brought a couple exercises back to park board and as, as well as senior advisory board to get your input. So we categorized all the programs and services into service categories. So just so examples, so these are all the different ser service categories that we work within. Um, rentals, we pretty much um, describe those as those that we take money for. So CI Beaver, Ball Diamonds, Athletic Fields, anything that's charged. Uh, reservations is more of our shelters, the meeting room. It's not really necessarily, there's a charge for them, they're free to the public. Skill-based activities, uh, for example, music classes, those are one that are basically teaching you a skill. So music, tennis. Uh, social based is our, like our day camp. Those are activities or programs that it's more of a social aspect. Now, of course, as you get into some of the toddler classes, you may not be you may be trying to teach them a skill, but it's more about you're teaching them to be social. Uh, community and education services, volunteering, uh, community events, for example, our summer concert series, special events, fishing derby or game night at the senior center, um, opus, open access is our playgrounds and trails, which means like it's just green space that anybody can um, go to. Merchandise for sale, golf shorts or clubs, and fundraising, for example, our golf scramble. So all of those categories are like the main themes and then anything that we do, we fit them into the different service categories. From there, uh, we looked at the different benefits that these things serve the community. So whether it's a full community uh, benefit, um, which is intended to be accessible to all in the community, um, such as green space. Is it a dual or a balanced benefit, uh, which would provide both a community as well as individual benefit, like our special events? Or is it an individual benefit, which provides exclusive benefit to the individual and not the community as a whole? So our facility rental, our classes, I know you can't see the pyramid, but the next slide will be a bigger <laughs> will be a bigger pyramid. Um, so we took the benefi beneficiary of services categories and then assigned them to a pyramid level. At the bottom is the open access, um, which means like you know anybody can again anybody can go. Um, com considerable community benefit is the next one up. Balanced benefit, considerable individual benefit, and at the top of the pyramid is the mostly individual benefit. So as we looked at all of those, we also determined what percentage to recoup of direct 
costs. So, and what we decided as a department or a division is we're only trying to recoup the direct costs. So instructors, materials, we're not necessarily trying to recoup all of the electric, the paper towels, the toilet paper, water utilities. So we just decided direct cost is what we really want to um, recoup. Hopefully you can see the pyramid a little bit bigger, uh, a little better. So again, at the bottom, the mostly community benefit, uh, we're not recouping anything. It doesn't cost us anything. We're cutting grass, but we're gonna cut the grass anyway. So, um, <clears throat> at the next one up is the conser considerable community benefit. We wanna try to recoup 50% of that. Um, those are our community events, community and educational services. Um, so as we look at community events, there is cost involved depending on entertainment or what we have out there, but then we get sponsorship dollars to help offset all the costs. Um, in the middle of the pyramid is our balanced benefit. So that's some of the special events or spo social based enrichment. Um, and we're trying to recoup 100% of the direct costs. So again, sponsorship dollars pays for everything. Um, Fourth of July would be a good example. We get sponsorship dollars and it pays for everything involved in the event. The next one up from there is considerable individual benefit. And these are the reservations and then this kind of the skill-based enrichment. And we're trying to get 125% cost recovery. And then at the, the very top of the pyramid is our mostly individual benefit, which are rentals, fundraising, merchandise, and trying to get 150% of those. Um, so for 2022, this past year was the first year that we really took a look at all of our programs, um, what we spent on everything as far as registration, instructors, um, that was classes, events, everything across the board. Um, we were really <laughs> pleased with ourselves. So for the mostly individual, again, which is that um, top tier, our goal was 150%, and actual, uh, we recouped 213% of the costs. Considerable, um, our goal was 125% and we recouped 141%. Our balanced benefit was 100% goal and the actual was 120, 120%, sorry. Um, and then considerable community benefit, our goal was 50% and our actual was 56%. So, um, and again, anything like all of our classes, whether it's yoga, Zumba, tennis, if they're all on the same level, we take all of those into consideration. So it's not like yoga made 213% of the goal, it just helped in that. So they made, yoga might have been less, but Zumba kind of helped offset those. So overall, why does all of this matter? Um, it helps solicit sponsorship. Um, it helps sell, set our program minimum and maximum as far as participation um, attendance. It helps set our program fees. So we've noticed like on the previous slide that we've hit all of our cost recovery goals. So we don't necessarily have to like raise a lot of our fees in order to um, recoup everything. We're doing good. Um, and then we're also, it looks at it, taxpayers aren't subsidizing individual benefits. So if I'm not a tennis player, I'm a taxpayer, I shouldn't be subsidizing your child going to tennis. Um, and then it also does help us discontinue underperforming classes and programs. So we can take a look at, um, Aaron has this humongous spreadsheet with everything. We can take a look at the attendance figures, what each class is making, and take a look at it throughout the years too. It's like, I don't wanna pick on anyone. We'll go with Tiny Todd Tumbling. Um, if that's not consistently getting attendance, well, at some point, we just have to discontinue that program and try to fill it with something else. So, so again, that was our cost recovery plan. Um, this is something that we're gonna be doing every single year. Um, Shauna, Jackie, Aaron helps put together all the figures so we can see everything that we're making and expenses, whether it's a facility, CI Beaver Hall, Ball Diamonds, um, or any of our classes so we can truly see how all of our things are, are doing. So, happy to answer any questions. If any questions for Kim? 
So you're exceeding benchmarks on in all categories, and if you have a large spreadsheet that describes each of those categories, are you considering reducing costs to individuals in order to be closer to the benchmarks? No, right now I think we're going to just kind of maintain where we've been um, because some of those do help. So because there are some classes that aren't aren't recouping it, and so something else is subsidizing it. So, but as long as it's still in that same pyramid level. So um, as far as like events and stuff like that, that does help us when we put sponsorship levels together because I can take a look at movie in the park. You know, if we were looking to get 100%, and we were at 130, okay, well, great. We can, you know, kind of change up those sponsorship levels a little bit as well. And, and this is just the only, the first year of data that we have as well, Yes, right? this is the first time that we've put this together and have been working yeah. through it. That's correct. Well, I, you know, we only played a small part in the process. I remember going through that and, and some of the conversations we had. But I, I was personally, I was proud of the product that you guys came up with at the end. I think it's Thank a you. it's a good plan. Thank you. Thank you. And so it looks like Zach's gonna give the division report tonight. Yeah. Good evening. It's good to be in front of you all again. It's been a few months. Kim's pulling up the division report here. Yeah, I actually asked Kim if you were still with us at the I last am. meeting. <laughs> you can't get rid of me that easy. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> All right, so here for our division report this evening. Uh, again, our mission uh, for our division is to deliver recreational experiences that enhance quality of life. It's something we live by. Uh, we preach to our staff, and we truly feel like we do live up to our mission every day and make a difference in our community. Um, so we have a new template that you guys are seeing tonight for the first time, and uh, one of the things Aaron and I were talking about uh, earlier this week was just every every month highlighting a different photo, of, a cool photo from our park. So this is actually a drone photo of the new parkland. Um, this was the stock one within the template, but it's a pretty neat photo, and we look forward to pulling together some neat photos every month to show you some of the things going on within the Parks, Recreation, and Culture Division. So we'll start off with the Senior Center. Uh, a few new programs, less bitter, less bitter and more glitter. Uh, as a new program, it's uh, on Wednesday, January 18th from 1 to 3 p.m. It's to celebrate the new year with light hors d'oeuvres, musical entertainment, and fun. And this is sponsored by Gem City Healthcare and Rehabilitation Center. That's at the Senior Center. And then also we're starting a new happy hour, new monthly activity sponsored by Kingston Healthcare. It'll be a variety of wines, sparkling drinks, and snacks chance for both new and long-term members to connect and be some more information on that coming soon and that's by Kingston of Miamisburg also within the senior center some very exciting news um, the senior center transportation service was awarded first place in the Ohio Parks Recreation Association Awards of Excellence in the adaptive category so every year um, OPRA has uh, several different categories. I believe there's 13 different categories of awards that they give out that are state level awards. And our transportation program took first place in the adapt adaptive program. So the award celebration and dinner is on Tuesday, January 31st, uh, up at the Kalahari Convention Center up in Sandusky. Uh, we hope to have some senior center, center members up there that are part of this great program. Um, they have an awesome program. It's great to be recognized at the state level for all of the work that they do. Moving on into recreation, um, the Do You Want to Build a Snowman event is back again. It's a very popular event. Uh, we've had one snow event this year, and although it was pretty darn cold to be out there building snowmen when it was negative degrees, but we did get a few submissions. Um, so be sure um, the next time we get a snow event, get outside, build a snowman, take a picture, and then submit it to our parks office at parks at beavercreekohio.gov by February 17th. Uh, after that deadline, the photos will be posted on Facebook for a chance at a prize. Yes, that was one of the ones from last year. <laughs> we get some great photos. Also has some new fitness classes. Uh, please visit our website and log into my rec to register for drums live, power beats, yoga, line dancing, Pilates, strollers in motion, taekwondo, wellness walkers, and many more. Some winter sports coming up. We have Skyhawks camps, basketballs for ages 5 through 9, 
a multi-sport offering for 6 through 12, also a mini hawk multi-sport offering for children 4 through 7, and then pickleball for younger kids 6 to 12. It's an ever-growing sport there. Really, I think, uh, I think it'd be really cool if you get some, um, some young, young kids playing with their parents and grandparents out on the court. Uh, also, we have archery for ages 10 to adult, and then extreme quest sports and quest cheer over at the quest center. And moving into parks, we also have another uh, award. Bob and Vicki Darden were nominated and awarded the 2022 OPRA Outstanding Citizens Award for all of their contributions for Beaver Creek Youth Softball Association, as well as all of the other volunteerism they do throughout the community with Feed the Creek and many other organizations. This is actually going to be the BYSA's 40th year. It started in 1983. Vicki's the one who started it. Um, and Bob came on several years later to help. But there's over 1,400 kids a year that are enrolled in the BYSA program. Uh, it's a fantastic program, and it's great just to recognize them for all that they've done for our community. Uh, Bob and Vicki are not able to be up at the, um, the convent OPRA conference and convention for the awards, but they did submit a video uh, for the awards ceremony that evening. But um, congratulations to them on this very prestigious award. Park staff has uh, started work on Cinnamon Ridge Park trails. Uh, we were out last week marking the trails that will be built within the, the wooded area. Letters were sent out last year, the end of December, uh, just notifying all of the surrounding neighbors of the project coming. It will be about a three-quarter of a mile trail that's going to be developed just for walking back at, uh, through that park. There's currently some existing trails, but they're not really well defined. They get pretty close to some of the neighbors. Um, so the new trail that we've marked out keeps a nice boundary away from some of the, the homes that are throughout there. They're 50 plus feet away um, is where the new trail will be. But our tr staff will be out starting next week uh, building that trail. Uh, and it'll be great for that neighborhood to enjoy. This is um, Cinnamon Ridge Park is just south of Shaker Town. It's off of Willow Run Road. So it's on the west side of town. Um, and this is a neighborhood where most of the streets do not have sidewalks. So it'll be a nice amenity for that neighborhood. Our staff is also working on restroom refurbishment at Dominic Lafino Park. We're working to get new stainless steel partitions for all the stalls. They've been in there for 20 years, and they've had lots of graffiti and other vandalism. So uh, we'll get some stainless steel partitions to uh, make that look new. They're also painting, uh, redoing the floors, installing new soap dispensers, stuff like that. All of these things, that those restrooms, have, it's time for just an upgrade and refurbishment. So our staff's working on that throughout the winter. Uh, so they'll be, they'll be brand new for everyone come spring. And that's all I have for you this evening. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Hey, quickly on the last slide, it said heat in, among the bullet points. Is that restroom heated now? Yeah. yeah, we installed baseboard heaters. Okay. Um, we still shut <clears throat> the restrooms down in the winter, that was but it's enough question. for us to be able to be in there to do some work, paint. Um, we'll turn the water off so we don't have any leaks, but we won't have to go through the whole winterization process. Okay. It's just less wear and tear on that restroom. Thank you. Yeah. Zach, is there parking at Cinnamon Ridge? There is a small parking lot for about three cars. Okay. So, um, the, like I said, the trail's going to be about three quarters of a mile. If people lived within the neighborhood or close by and wanted to drive there, they may. Uh, it's not really like a destination park where you're going to go and go out, sit on a, a big, long hike. I envision a lot of people walking there from the neighborhood. But if you were to drive, there is a place to park. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Zach? No. I have a question. When will summer camps be up? Kim? Registration. It's a great question. I'm going to have to defer that she, one to Kim. And she was waiting for you to answer. See, I saw her. She wasn't going to bail you out either. Zach? <laughs> um, so we're going to have everything, information out early March, and then registration will open on March 15th. Um, if anybody is interested in summer day camp, I highly suggest you pay attention to those dates and start talking to your spouse and family now and start plotting out when you want to come to summer camp because if you would really like to come to our summer day camp, I would register on that very first day. So you can do it online, call our office, stop in, but uh, we did fill up multiple weeks um, within a couple of days last year. I have a question about Wartinger Park. Yeah. There's been an investment in rebuilding that barn. Has that generated any revenue for the parks? We had, I believe, was it two or three reservations 
this past fall, so we've had several. Um, do we have any more scheduled for this spring? We, ha we do have quite a few more. Typically, we've had one a year, um, so we are seeing several more. Um, I think it's just a, it's not going to be a huge money maker. It's, it's still, it's, but it will generate some revenue now that it's a brand new barn, and I think it's, people are excited about having that new space. Thank you. Yeah. So talking about Wardinger Park, when are they going to start the roofing project on those cabins? Yeah, hopefully that project starts soon. I think um, Kim may have the timeline on that. Kim has all the answers this evening. Um, but that, that project's slated, I think, to kick off this spring. Is that correct, Kim? Yeah, sorry. I just enjoy giving you a look like, <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, had we known a couple weeks ago we were going to have 60-degree weather, they would have been out there. Um, but <clears throat> So we did get uh, two grants to replace to help us pay for all four roofs of those cabins, and we're probably looking at March-ish. We're waiting for all the supplies to come in. You're welcome. Thanks, Zach. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> all right, our next agenda item is old business. And um, again, tonight, before this meeting, we had a work session um, with the park board to discuss. Oh, that's not what I'm talking about. Well, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. Um, our volunteer recognition program, which is coming up in the spring, and uh, that will be April 20th at the Beaver Creek Golf Club. Doors open 6:30. Um, program starts at 7. Invitation only. Oh, how about that? This is usually where we also talk about volunteer opportunities <laughs> instead of what I just said. So. <laughs> um. So generally, we do have events coming up that we'll be asking for volunteers. Um, but right now, um, in February, we really don't have a whole lot of events. Um, it's a little chilly outside for us. Um, but I can say the Senior Center is always looking for volunteers, especially on the ch in the transportation program. Um, a lot of our driver's escorts head south for the winter. Um, God bless them. Wish I could join them. Um, but there, but then also anybody within the schools, Eagle Scouts, Girl Scouts, National Honor Society, anybody looking for volunteer hours. Uh, we certainly have some projects together that Zach has put together in our parks. Um, or if there's a business or organization, church, that likes to do volunteer work, um, we would be happy to discuss some different options there as well. Great, thank you. I'm not aware of new business. Is there anything I'm forgetting about? No? Um, no unscheduled visitors this evening. Action items, I kind of jumped the gun on those. Action items we have are related to our volunteer program, so next week we will get together to shore, or next month, excuse me, get together to shore up some items related to budget and, um, and uh, other aspects of the program. Which leads us to board time. Uh, I think uh, maybe we'll start on your end, Candy. Sure. Uh, I just wanted to put out a congratulations to the Senior Center for achieving first place in transportation, and then uh, obviously Bob and Vicki Darden, too, for all their efforts that they've done over the years and winning the Outstanding Citizens Award. They deserve it. Congratulations to the staff on the cost recovery program. I know that that was um, a big undertaking, and I know that in the years to come that will be um, great to have that data. So good job. I can move on. <laughs> you don't have anything? You have anything? I was just going to say our last event, the Winter Wonderland, was so much fun. Um, it was a great turnout, I thought, and people seemed to really enjoy it. Um, people loved the barn, so hopefully that will, you know, encourage people to look into renting it and stuff. I know there was lots of conversations about that, so that was a good, a good. Oh, I, have I can jump into her <laughs> board time. I, again, want to thank our park staff. Um, they were the ones who decorated the barn. That's what um, I was going to say. Is they did such they an did amazing such job. They did such an amazing job. And, it's, it was beautiful. and I gave them a hard time throughout the whole thing because <laughs> we did, had all the pathways lit up as well. Um, but they really got into it. And the barn, that was all of them. It's like, we need this and we need this. It's like, well, here's a tree. It's like, no, that tree's not good enough. We need this our park maintenance staff did an absolutely amazing job and they it did. looked gorgeous. So I don't think we can thank them enough for the time that they spent on it. And 
they wrapped all the packages too. Yeah. That was our guys. They to were wrap amazing. The boxes, so. That's awesome. It was beautiful. It was great. It was nice. Yeah. And it was a good event. You're right. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, so I guess that leaves me. Uh, you know, like Candy said, uh, congratulations on the OPRA awards for excellence. I know um, we hear a lot about the transportation program, and often as we recognize volunteers, um, the folks that work in that program are a big part of that, and we know that. So it's nice to see some recognition for that um, program. And then I'll, I'll just say I, I continue to remain excited about the new park. I'm looking forward to the city council um, moving forward with the name selection, and uh, I'm anxious to, to for spring to get here and we start to see some things. I know early work is going to be primarily related to uh, water issues, but uh, I'm anxious over the next couple of years to see how quickly that progresses uh, and benefits our community. So, uh, and I love the picture that you had up there, Zach, from the drone. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. If, um, if we have nothing else to add, I would accept a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 May adjourn. <laughs>